today we have got something golden to talk about. Today we're going to talk about goal setting, but in a really cool way. Sometimes in life we have this idea about what we might like. We have these dreams, we have these hopes, and we've got a dream. And as the old saying goes, you've got to have a dream for a dream to come true. But what we need to do is take that dream and make it a possibility. And that's through goal setting. That's through creating an outcome, truly connecting with an outcome that you want. So how do we do that? Well, we've got some great stuff to talk about. First of all, who's heard of smart goaling? Well, I've got a variation of that called smart e-goaling. And you're gonna find out in a minute why the e bit is important. But let's first talk about smart goaling. Smart goaling is, um, stands for something. S-M-A-R-T, and then there's my special E on the end. Well, let's start with the S. The S stands for specific, or what I like to use, the word sensory. So when you write a goal, that goal should be written in sensory terms. You should have the touchy feeliness, the visual, the kinesthetic, the auditory components. So for example, if I had a goal, in fact, I've got one over here. If I had a goal to get a Ducati, and this is, a, this is something I've thought about for a long time, and I've decided to make it a goal. So if I'm going to write my goal out in sensory or specific terms, I'd be thinking about, you know, that there's this incredible red Juco with these shiny black chrome um, wheels, and there's this beautiful soft black leather seat and these silicon grips and, you know, just this sensory terminology that we would use to describe the goal, but I describe what it feels like when it starts up and the rumble and the sound of the motor and the, and the feeling of the rumbling coming through the engine into the seat. We would describe this in sensory terms. Secondly, we'd make sure that the goal was measurable. that we could put some numbers around. So I'm gonna get a Learn Illegal Ducati, a 600cc Ducati, and I'm gonna get it by the 1st of December, 2013. We're gonna use terms that are measurable, so it's very specific. We know exactly what we want, and we can measure what it is when we get it. A is really cool. A is writing out your goal as if it's done. Or if you like, writing a diary. So when you write it, you write it as if it's done. So you write, today, beautiful sunny day, I took my new Ducati out. It's the 1st of December. And the sun is shining and I started up and it was just beautiful to ride. And we, I went for a 20k ride on the Ducati. You're writing it as if it has been done, as if you've actually achieved the goal. And again, you're writing it in measurable terms, and you're writing it in specific or sensory terms when you're writing out the goal. R is, but make sure this is a real goal. Make sure that it's something that you really want. And make sure, the other R is make sure that you are response-able. That you can be responsible for the goal. That no one else is required to fulfill that goal. That you can take full responsibility for the achievement or not of that goal. And that's really, really important. And lastly, of course, it really ties in with measurable, that there's a time. This is what turns a dream into a goal. When you add time, when it, when it becomes time specific, that's where the magic starts to happen. So quick recap, specific, you write the goal in sensory terms, it's always measurable. You write as if it's been done already. It's not I'd like to or I wish I could, it is I have and I am. It's real, of course, and that you're responsible, that you're the one that is totally responsible for achieving the goal. And of course, that there's a time set on it. Well, the last bit, the E is key. The E stands for ecology. What that really means is, is this goal good for you and good for others around you? Because sometimes we think we want something, we're told that it would be a cool thing to have. But maybe it's not. Maybe it's not a match for us. And so we, we write out this goal, we do all the smart goaling, 
And we keep wondering why we never really achieve it. It's because we have other agendas. It's because we have secondary goals. It's because we have some unconscious goals. That the goal that we've set doesn't really match our beliefs. It doesn't really match our map of the world. It doesn't fit in with our values. So ecology, we look at two key things. We look at values, we're going to talk about that in a minute, and secondly we look at um, the woulds, the wouldn'ts, the dids and the didn'ts. That sounds a bit crazy, but you'll understand in just a minute. Let's hit values. It's like woulds, wouldn'ts, dids and didn'ts. So let's do values. Really simple. If you haven't already done this exercise and understand your own values, this is kind of a really quick way to do it. <clears throat> you may have seen the Wheel of Life before. It's a wheel. It's got lots of spikes on it. And each of those spikes is an aspect of your life. And usually we have, you know, seven plus or minus two spikes. We might have five, six, seven, eight, nine different spokes in our life, and that might be, for example, family, relationships, health, uh, money, um, work, uh, recreation, sport. We've got different aspects to our life. Really simply, what you do is you look at those aspects of your life and you think about what do you value most about that. So, for example, if I looked at health, one of my values for health would be that, that Doing health is a fun activity. That if I'm going to eat well, or that if I'm going to exercise, one of the key values around that is that it's fun. So I would have fun as one of my key values. And I might have three or four other different things in relation to health. But I'd look at relationships. What do I value most about relationships? And it might be honesty. It might be integrity. It might be um, connection. And so I'd list those as well. And I'd go through those different aspects of my life and list the values that I have with those. And it's a really simple and quick exercise. Trust your instinct. Just let it flow. Well, you take those top two or three things from each aspect of your life and you compare them to what your goal is. So again, if I zip back to my Ducati goal, I look at, okay, for health, does, does the goal of owning a Ducati, does that fit with health? Well... I reckon it does, because one of my values for health is fun. One of my values for health is outdoors, connecting with the environment. And I reckon that, you know, running a Ducati out in the open air and the fun and the connection with the planet, I reckon that kind of ticks those boxes. So I do that for each of those aspects of my life. Does it fit with the values of family? Does it fit with the values of money? Does it fit with work? And I check in. And if it does, Cool. Ecology, check. It fits my values. I can't see any reason why there's a part of me that is not going to want to achieve that goal. The second thing is the WWDDs. And this is the would, wouldn't, did, and didn'ts. That's crazy, crazy things with your mind when you say that. But it's really simple. You do a little quadrant kind of thing. At one end you put the did, the didn't, the uh, would, and the wouldn't. And really simply, you ask yourself, if I did this goal, what would happen? How would my life change? What would occur if I did this goal? So again, I'll zip back to the Ducati example. So if I did get my Ducati, what would happen? Well, I'd be out having some fun. I would uh, be making new connections, meeting with new people that own motorbikes. I would uh, um, get out in the fresh air more. They're the things that I could go on and on, but to keep this quick, if I did the goal, what would happen? If I didn't do it, if I didn't get my Ducati, what would happen to my life? If I didn't, what would happen? Now, these two are the key. The question is, if I did get my Ducati, what wouldn't happen? Hmm. So, if I did get the Ducati, what wouldn't happen? Well, maybe if I did get the Ducati, I wouldn't uh, be at home as much with my family because I'd be out riding the bike. Maybe. Great question. If I did get it, what wouldn't happen? 
And then lastly, the golden one, and what I reckon is probably one of the keys to determining whether this goal was ecologically sound, is asking the question, if I don't get this goal, if I didn't get it, what wouldn't happen? Hmm, that's kind of a bit Bermuda Triangle sort of stuff, isn't it? What wouldn't happen if I didn't get the goal? Great question. So, to a quick really recap, when we talk about ecology, you check in with your values, does that goal fit? And secondly, you check in with this quadrant of questions. And these questions are designed to bring out or further reinforce why this goal is a fit for you, why this goal is a great idea. Or it reinforces why maybe it's not a great idea. You might find there's lots of reasons that come up why this wouldn't be a great idea to do the goal. So then really simply, you write your goal out using our smart E goaling method, and then you apply the success principle. And this is really simple. You take your goal, you've got it all sorted out, you've got time, you've got measurable, specific, you know exactly what you want, you know that it fits you as a person, there's no other secondary reason why the goal shouldn't happen. You got the goal. What do you then do? You take action. You get the goal, and the catch is you've got to take action. You've got to do something. You can't just sit at home meditating on the goal. You know, there was a lot of misconception that came out when that book was written or the video was done on called The Secret. A lot of people thought that I just have to think the thing, and all of a sudden it will appear. That's not how it works. You've got to do something. You've got to take some action. So you take some action. Then you check in. You look for some feedback as you're taking that action. You look for some feedback and you just check in to see, is it working? Is what I'm doing moving me closer towards my goal? Now, if the feedback is not is that it's not, what do you do? You change what you're doing and take more action. Check in. Is it working? If it's not, change. Take more action. Check in. If it's not working, change. Take more action. Check in. If it's working, just keep going. Regularly check in. It's a bit like when they launch a missile, you know, or a plane takes off. Did you know that something like 70 or 80 or 90% of the time, that missile or that plane is off course? But it's checking to see if it's on course, and it goes on a little off course, gets the feedback, changes direction again back on track, changes direction, back on track, changes direction, back on track. So don't take, when you check in, that it's not working, is that you're doing necessarily something wrong. Just change what you're doing. It's really important to understand that what you do is not who you are. Because sometimes we look at feedback and we go, oh, you know, I did that all wrong. I lost, I lost that thing there, therefore I am a loser. That's not the way it works. If you understand that there is no right or wrong, only feedback, there is no failure, only feedback, and then you change, take action, change, take action, eventually you'll get to your goal. That's a long video blog today, so I apologise, because it's not the normal four to five minutes, but this is a big topic. Uh, a big hello to my good mate Russ, who's uh, having some challenges with goal setting at the moment. And Tim, he told me not to wear the cap. I like the cap. I reckon the cap's good. This is a coach cap. So, big hello out there to Tim as well. Until next time, live life. Perform at your best and be well.